contacting alien life is like opening a mysterious door. On the other side of the door, you know it could be heaven or it could be hell. Do you open the door? Or do you decide to just live the rest of your life and not take the gamble? This is a key question that we should ask ourselves when reaching out to alien life in the cosmos. To take a deeper look at the concept of contacting alien life, let's start with a question. Why haven't aliens contacted us already? This is something called the Fermi Paradox, which is the question of if our universe is so enormous and so old, why haven't any alien life forms contacted us yet? Of course, there is much scientific debate and conflicting theories about this concept. Perhaps mankind is so insignificant to any other life in the galaxy that none of our universal neighbors really care about our little earthly lives. Or perhaps we can't even recognize life that exists elsewhere. It could be something completely different than what we consider or identify as intelligent life. Or perhaps the logistics and the cost to traveling such immense distances between inhabitable planets is simply unachievable by any civilization. Or perhaps humans really are the pinnacle of the universe and there is simply nothing else like us out there anywhere. Regardless of why aliens haven't found us, a fundamental question looms. Should we be sending signals out to the universe looking for a response from alien life? Humans have been sending signals out to the stars since the Arecibo radio telescope in 1974. More recently, on February 4, 2008, on the 50th anniversary of NASA's founding, NASA beamed the Beatles song across the universe into space. Now, whether you think Beatles music should represent us as a planet is a whole other issue, but this does raise the question, is it smart to shout our human voice into space? Is it smart to give away our coordinates to other life forms out there in the complete unknown universe? Sure, we might find alien life that brings proverbial heaven to earth. They may show up and gift us unfathomable technology and all sorts of advancements they could help us achieve a utopia that we have only dreamed of. But ask yourself, what are the chances that alien life comes here simply to shower us with gifts and knowledge? Have we ever observed this type of behavior in any other species? The food chain and hierarchies are an undisputable feature of life on our planet. Why wouldn't that feature of life pertain to the entire universe as well? What if we are not higher on the cosmic food chain than whatever life we contact? And even if we realize it's a bad idea to call out to alien life, it might be too late. Aliens might have already heard our signals and could already be en route. To complicate things even further, even if we do receive some sort of confirmation that our signal has been greeted pleasantly and optimistically by alien life, we don't know if those same positive feelings will ring true once they actually arrive on Earth. Consider something I call the whisper down the alley effect. If aliens are traveling across massive distances, it might take them multiple generations to reach Earth. This could potentially change the course of the initial mission as new generations have new ideas, or moral quarrels, or misunderstandings of the original message, and maybe just disagreeing with their elders. Another possible answer to the Fermi Paradox and why aliens haven't contacted us is the zoo theory. The idea that, well, like a zoo, we are all being observed. There is some entity out there watching us, but what would be the motivation for watching us? It could be for simple entertainment value, for study and observation, or something more like a parent watching over their child as they grow, or even God himself simply studying his creation. Sending out signals to these zookeepers would be as futile as a monkey begging for help in a zoo or a panda flashing sad eyes to a child through a thick pane of glass. And even if we do assume that these zookeepers are benevolent, which they might not be, we still have to ask the question, what happens when these watchers, these observers, get bored with us or no longer have a reason to observe us? Are we just a zoo exhibit that is bound to close at some point? Another reason for the Fermi Paradox may simply be the almost certain barriers for communication between 
distant galactic civilizations. This is another reason why human society should be careful when sending out signals to space. Our language could very well be misinterpreted, and a warm greeting or even a Beatles song could be taken as a hostile threat. If we send our music into the cosmos, we should take a moment to imagine how we might interpret alien music if we heard it. Would we perceive it as a welcome greeting or some sort of garbled foreign threat? Communication isn't the only thing that could vastly vary among intergalactic life. Even things we take for granted like time and distance may be interpreted very differently by different species. After all, humans always say things like, time flies as you get older. Maybe there is some truth to this, and if humans can experience time differently at different stages of their life, it seems likely that another intergalactic species may experience time and distance differently as well. Perhaps the reason we have never met, or gone to war, or made peace with aliens is simply that the distance between galaxies is so sheerly immense that it truly is impossible, and we will never discover another life form in the stars. Maybe that is an evolutionary feature of our universe. Maybe all of us living things that are capable of violence are kept on our own little planets so remote from each other as to ensure that we don't destroy each other like we inevitably would at least if humanity's track record is any evidence to predict the outcome of intelligent species meeting. Either by design, by chance, or by some sort of self-awareness, the universe may have a built-in survival feature, something like a planetary antibody that keeps life forms from communicating with each other to avoid the inevitable mutual destruction between intergalactic civilizations. Maybe there is a reason why we as a human society have created so many books and movies and comics and radio shows warning about the dangers of alien life. Maybe these were more than mere entertainment or creativity. Uh, at least on some level, these could have been prophecies in some sense. We have been warning ourselves about threats that exist out in the cosmos for a long time. And while most Hollywood movies have a happy ending, it's not guaranteed that we will have the same type of ending here in the real world. After all, is it more likely that we are living in a summer Hollywood blockbuster, or that we're living in an episode of The Twilight Zone? Consider how much we actually know about the universe. Take the example of dark matter, which makes up a vast majority of the universe by scientific estimates, yet we can't actually interact with it or see it. It doesn't absorb or reflect light at all. Maybe we can't interact with the majority of the universe for a good reason. Maybe out there in the galaxy, it is foolish to scream out for attention. Here's a question. Is our world, perhaps our entire galaxy, naturally camouflaging itself so it can't be detected by extraterrestrial predators? Plenty of living organisms, such as owls and insects, polar bears, leopards, uh, certain vipers, and of course, chameleons, all use camouflage for defense. So is it really that far-fetched that, as a larger organism, our galaxy actually defends itself in a similar manner? But now let's consider the flip side. What if we contact aliens and we are the higher entity on the intergalactic food chain? Looking at mankind's history, how long would it take before we colonized whatever life form we meet? Especially as our own planet deteriorates. This sort of ethical debate about our own behavior as a species could immensely complicate political matters on Earth. For instance, which country or government entity gets to decide how we approach alien life as a whole? Who has the final say? Depending on who contacts the aliens or where they land, they may be aligned with a human leader which could cause utter catastrophe. I mean, imagine if aliens made sole contact in North Korea and said, take me to your leader. And who knows, maybe it won't even be humans who finally contact alien life forms. At this point, it seems more likely it will be the artificial intelligence that eventually outgrows us and ventures off to explore the deeper recesses of the universe that we can only speculate about. Finally, humans may truly be the pinnacle of the universe. It may sound pompous and ridiculous to imagine we are the only intelligent life in all of the universe, but given the scientific proof that we currently possess, we are the pinnacle of the universe. In the end, I personally believe we should keep looking for life out there in the universe, but we should stop broadcasting our signal, letting everyone know we are in the neighborhood, 
giving away our strategic position and opening ourselves up as a target for a hostile civilization. Even a peaceful but desperate civilization that arrives on Earth may prove to be the end for humanity because of disease or countless other factors. When and if we do decide to send signals out to space, those signals should be carefully crafted, intensely debated, and approved as a human society. We should all have a say before we, as a society, open the door that has the potential to lead to either heaven or, much more likely, to hell. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Should we be reaching out to Alien Life? Uh, what do you think explains the Fermi Paradox? I'd be really curious to get some thoughts from you guys, so feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and we will talk to you guys real soon. Take care. For more content, check out darkfictionfactory.com and more here on the Dark Fiction Factory YouTube.